WrestleMania stuff in the, in the newsletter. I think the most fascinating thing uh, about the WrestleMania story this week was that Paul Heyman is involved in the storyline with Roman and Sammy that has kind of overshadowed everything else. And he's also involved in the creative of the storyline with well, Cody and Roman, right? Well, he's he's going to be involved in any creative that has to do with Roman Reigns, Ronda Rousey, and Brock Lesnar. So, um, so yeah, but I mean, the big stories are, are the, the big matches are, are Roman Reigns matches. So he's going to have involvement in that. Yeah. You know, and Roman Reigns does too. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was fascinating to me watching that promo, as I think I mentioned, because there's levels to it. And one of the things was, is that it's like, you know, he was very much, you know, he and Roman are very much architects of the Sami Zayn storyline. Um, you know, obviously it was not a long-term plan at first, but it clicked and it was it was some time back when they went and decided on this direction. And then he got out even hotter than they expected. But the decision was made that they are, you know, this is not, he's not a WrestleMania main eventer. You know, you can argue that that was the decision. Then it got even hotter, you know, to the point where it's like, it's so obvious this should be the WrestleMania main event. but you know, the powers that be had their plans. So essentially he had to, um, he and Cody had to do, you know, a, an angle, so to speak, that would get the WrestleMania main event to the point where it wasn't overshadowed by another angle, you know, that he was doing. So um, that was the tack that they took. I mean, it was very different uh it's very different tack than is usually taken but they had to address the Sami Zayn thing and they had to create a storyline um to make this match um bigger and more emotional and things like that uh or at least on par with the match that people were the most interested in right now and whether they succeed or not you know I mean um you know time will tell I I think that you know, I don't I don't sense from anything that Cody's getting booed, you know, or being resented by the fan base. I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, you know, merchandise sales wise, he's doing really good. But, you know, I mean, you can't totally predict this audience, but I think I, I think that it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be good. That promo on Monday night was so good that my immediate worry was, I wonder if they should have saved this for the go home. You mean they peaked too soon? I think the feeling was is that they were that they felt they needed it now, you know, because um, you know, but but I know what you're saying. I I, I think that there's more they can that they can hit on the go home. Um, they didn't they didn't throw everything they had out there, and it, it, it's certainly something that you can follow up with. In fact, the last line to me was a line that you would do, you know. I mean, I wouldn't say two months out, but I would say four weeks out. Mm -hmm. So they did it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, I don't think that's a big anything to really, you know, it's no big deal. Do you sense that they're going to show any of this dusty footage in the buildup to sort of, you know, because Cody's going back to the late 70s now. Yeah, the 1977. You know, there's, some of that, there's some of that audience who, who may know that stuff, but a lot of this audience is, does not really know. Oh, most of the audience isn't going to know about this. I mean, yeah, he's trying to do essentially the Von Erich story. You know, except make it the road story of decade after decade, we've been chasing this title. I mean, and, and with the Von Erich story, what was so great about it is, is it was a constant from 66 to 84, you know, um, but that's 18 years. Um, so that's 18 years is very different from um, uh, 46 years. And um, but but with the Von Erichs, it was 18 years straight in that market. With this one, it's a feud that took place in 1977. And then really nothing. And now it's like trying to hit it a little bit based off of, you know, I mean, that's Cody's start point. He brought it up on the day he came back was, you know, seeing this picture of Dusty holding the belt, you know, when he won the match by count out, um, the September 77 match at the Garden where he won it by count out, um, not understanding that the title hasn't changed hands on count out, which is funny because obviously that's been a rule forever. But if you watch that match, you also realize that the fans in the building didn't even know that rule because he did get the pop 
that he, that the, the people think he, he won and then they you know took it away from him and built you know and it built the rematch which also did very very well the thing that i found the most fascinating about um you know that dusty and superstar billy graham story is that they only did the match in madison square garden and it was a double sellout both times you know i mean the garden and the felt and the felt forum which is you know now the um what's it called now the theater but um who who theater but um you know, that would have drawn in in Boston, huge, Philadelphia, huge. It would have drawn everywhere huge, you know, uh, Billy Graham and and, uh, and Dusty. And I don't know why they only, it just makes no sense that you have a match that big. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Br- um, Billy Graham's out there working with like Larry Zabisco and Tony Gurria and Jay Strongbow and all these guys, you know, in, in all these major cities, as opposed to doing, you know, double shot, you know, two match programs with dusty that would have drawn much bigger um you know i mean dusty was big in in florida in and and georgia and worked you know worked those worked other places but still i mean the grosses that you would get for a main event and the money you'd get for a main event in philadelphia are a lot more than he was going to make in florida and he could get those days off on weekends not not you know because because um you know saturday nights in in florida as i recall I think I don't think I think the Omni was it was either Friday or Sunday. I forget. I think the Omni was Friday. I mean, the um, Atlanta was Friday. It was Friday night city back in 77. And then Tampa was Tuesday. Miami Beach was Wednesday. Jacksonville was Thursday. So the key money cities, you know, and, and, and you know, WWE, you know, I mean, the Garden wasn't Saturday usually. But but the other arenas when they did the big shows were very were mostly Saturdays. So it's not like and, and it's not like um, um, and Toronto was Sunday um usually so it's not like these were um dates that he couldn't get i just found that fascinating you get this this money match clearly a money match with two of the most charismatic guys of the era you know it was the second biggest match that billy could do in the northeast you know behind only bruno you know that was the only bigger one so it was like why didn't they book dusty more and they used you know dusty flew up to do television to build this stuff up it wasn't like it's just dusty off of um you know the Florida TV that's on in uh, in New York and not in the other markets. Dusty was and Dusty worked the Northeast. You know, as as a special attraction, that was a regular thing. You know, Dusty and Mel Moscaris were guys that they would bring in for the big for big shows anyway. So it's not like anybody didn't know Dusty. So I was when I looked back at that, it's like you know, man, they hit something so big. You know, why didn't they do it? Even Billy drew well everywhere, but you know, Billy again, you know, going against those names I mentioned as compared to Dusty. It would have been big differences, you know. He would have, those those would have been sellouts everywhere, or or close to sellouts, you know, um, everywhere. Are you still hearing from people or seeing feedback where people are just like they're missing lightning in a bottle here with with Sami Zayn? I mean, not as strong since Monday. I haven't really heard people like. I think that there's sort of an acknowledgement. But it's kind of like that's the decision. You know, as far as internally, it's like that's it's it's basically look, it's the decision, and it's going to be fine either way. You know, but um, you know, would would other people perhaps uh, have done it differently? Sure, but you know what, WrestleMania is going to be gigantic no matter what. So it's not, um, you know, I mean, it's it's there's there's big mistakes that you make in booking, and then there's things that you know could it be better sure could you tweak it sure but it's not like it's a i I wouldn't call i wouldn't call it a big mistake at this point and and again um you know it's two totally different stories you know the 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 sammy zane story and the cody road story are completely different and and right now they're both clicking um what what is going on with the becky story for wrestlemania she seems to have like nothing at least that has been set so far, I, I, I don't know. I, I I thought maybe Becky and Lita tag team. Becky and Lita against, but there's three of, of damage control. Yeah, um, it might be Bailey and someone else because damage control was supposed to wrestle Ronda and Shayna. Interesting. So could be uh, Bailey and, you know, I don't know. I don't know who. I mean, there's any you know who else on the roster. I, I actually I actually could could you know see if I could find out about that one. It just doesn't seem big enough for her. Well, you could say that, but they've got other big stuff and she's not, um, you know, it's, it's like, um, she's, you know, Becky's not on fire. Like she was years past, 
So it's not like, um, you know, um, or they could just do, I mean, I would say they, they, it's, it's hard to do Bailey and Becky once you've done the cage match Yeah, to come back to it, but perhaps they could do like a big step or, or something, or, you know, hopefully there's something and it's not just like thrown into a battle Royal thing. I'm sure. And I, mean, I, I, I shouldn't say I'm sure that I would think that with Lynch, that they would have enough to, um, that they would think of her more than, you know, even at this stage where she's not as hot as she once was where, where, um, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be just, you know, we'll, we'll put you in the match to get everyone on the card match. You know, I think that she'll, they got two shows. So you got to figure we're, we're talking 14 matches. If you're doing seven matches a show and you don't want to do much longer, you know, um, than that, you know, I don't think you want more than seven and you have seven big ones rather than like what, you know, what they used to do with like 13, 14 and cram them all in. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, our, our friend, uh, Paul Fontaine fantasy booked having damage control, lose the tag titles to Raquel and live so that Rhonda and Shayna could go there. And then because Lita came in doing like a Becky and Lita and Trish against damage control and, and Bailey, that, that would be kind I, of I interesting. Mean, you could do that. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, you could, you could do that. Um, uh, you know, um, it's WrestleMania. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's just interesting that they had the legends sort of picked for the men's side. None of them worked out. And now the only legends seem to be uh, Lita right now, at least as far as who, who seems to be in, in place for something at WrestleMania. I would think that I would think that she's in place for something. Yeah. Here is some actual commentary from Bash and Burger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Booger demanded hot dogs. <laughs> were they delivered it? in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We we're told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Brian. Big juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you broke Benny. <laughs> If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.